Key point one. Keep an eye on your pet animals. Very few people on this planet will admit to a fascination with death, and most probably, if they share this passion with others, people will stare at them. You might wonder, what's so fun about death? It's morbid and sad. People lose their families, lovers, dear friends, or neighbors they see daily on their way to work. Death is the journey's end, and most individuals prefer to ignore this gloomy topic. Let's consider children who are very curious about death and not scared to ask uncomfortable questions and explore the world around them. What will happen to a corpse in space? Can a body sit up or speak after its death? That's only a tiny part of their inquiries. Adults should implement the same altitude, study death, and accept it as a part of life. You cannot fear something you know everything about. Now it's time to sit down and talk seriously with your cats. Did you know these furry cuties will eat dead people's eyes? Not out of spite, of course. They're just hungry. If their owner is deceased, cats have no choice but to go for the soft parts of the human body. Lips, eyelids, and tongue. And dog owners shouldn't be at ease either. Even the most loving dogs will eat a corpse if they're starving. After all, they are animals with a primary need for food. They might also get stressed that their owner doesn't respond and start attacking their body to wake them up. Are you intrigued about other deathly secrets? Then dive into the summary. It will answer the most extraordinary questions about dying. If you are frustrated about the end of your life, this information will soothe your anxiety and bring a new perspective to such a dreaded subject. Key Point 2 Death During Space Travel The destiny of a dead body in space is a mystery. Technically, some people have died there, but only due to a spaceship crash. No one has ever passed from natural causes while exploring the galaxies. Therefore, there is only a hypothetical scenario of what might happen. Imagine an astronaut conducting a spacewalk to repair their spaceship. Whoops, suddenly, their spacesuit gets torn by a small meteorite. The situation is critical as the astronaut has only 10 seconds to fix their suit and cover the hole. Subtract from this time the period of shock they experience. Most likely, they won't make it. Since there's no air pressure in space, the liquid in their body will probably become gas, and the blood will start boiling. Ouch, that sounds painful. But even if the astronaut dies on the spacewalk, they won't realize it. After 10 seconds, they will lose consciousness. The sensations of death in space are equivalent to scuba divers' pain when they emerge too quickly from the water. The next question is, what should other astronauts do with the dead body? Should they let it float in outer space or bring it back to Earth? The first option is poetic. Just like sailors bury their comrades at sea, dead astronauts might stay to explore the little-known corners of dark space forever. But what if the corpse lands on a distant planet and creates new species with its bacteria and microbes? Yeah, it sounds like a script for a new Hollywood sci-fi movie, but who can guarantee it is not feasible? Space is perplexing and unpredictable. If the astronauts wish to take the body home, they can store the corpse in the coldest part of the spaceship, along with the trash and food leftovers. Not a very flattering position for the dead, but only cold can prevent the body from decomposition. NASA worked with a Swedish company on a device perfect for such a possibility. It is called Body Back. This mechanism would freeze the body, cut it into pieces, and then grind it into powder. This machine will be an essential find for explorers on long-haul trips to Mars. Key Point 3 Inside the Dead Body The corpse may be still, but it doesn't mean all internal processes pause. Bacteria, microbes, blood, and other liquids activate, and the dead body starts changing color like a kaleidoscope. The first transformation occurs when the heart stops supplying blood to other parts of the body, and the fingers and lips turn pale. Pupils become milky. That is why you should close a dead person's eyes. Otherwise, their zombie appearance may frighten you. Next comes liver mortis. An accumulation of body fluid in the lower parts of the body, usually the back. Typically, the skin turns purple, but many external factors can influence the color. Cherry red signifies death in the cold, whereas pink can indicate suffocation or heart attack. A new palate emerges as bacteria break loose and disperse inside the body. Green and even black colors might appear in the stomach area. As the blood vessels degenerate, the veins turn purple. Fun fact, this is where artists took their inspiration for zombie makeup in movies. 
Liver Mortis can tell crime scene investigators the whole story of how a person died. A person who attends a funeral or cremation won't notice any radical changes in the dead body, except for extreme paleness because decomposition can take days. The morticians might also put the corpse into a refrigerator or embalm it, making it look normal. It is for the better. Decay can alter the body to the extent you wouldn't recognize the face or guess the deceased's age. Thankfully, the gory possibility of a dead body standing up and speaking to someone in the room won't happen. Corpses don't do this. However, they might tickle people's nerves with twitches and moans. After death, the nervous system can still respond with spasms. Sometimes they last up to 12 hours. As for the ominous groan, it's just air moving through the windpipe, creating the sound. A few centuries ago, doctors had no advanced technologies to check whether a person was dead, and those moans and twitches frightened them. Physicians in Germany came up with an unusual solution. They created waiting mortuaries, heated places where special workers could oversee the corpse till they rotted. It was the guarantee they could finally bury the body. But no one ever awakened in these waiting mortuaries, so they closed down for good. Key Point 4 The Menace of Buried Corpses Can a dead body be a source of dangerous diseases and infections? Many people are concerned that buried corpses can contaminate underground water supplies. If that's the case for you, you can sigh with relief. Bacteria in dead bodies cannot cause severe complications in the living. You'll be okay drinking water from a well near a cemetery. The only exception is the bacteria of cholera or Ebola. In West Africa, the funeral procedure requires the washing of the body. Relatives of the deceased involved in the process contracted the diseases in epidemic proportions due to the dead bodies coming in contact with their water supplies. They either spread the cholera germs on their hands to the food served at the funeral afterward or poured excrement from the infected bodies into the river. The materials used in burial processes, such as metal or formaldehyde, also pose a significant risk. During the Civil War, thousands of soldiers passed, and their relatives insisted on bringing them home for proper funerals. Chemical elements oozed from the soldiers' bodies into their graves and entered water supplies. Researchers examining water near a Civil War cemetery in Iowa detected a critical level of arsenic in the nearby water system. Arsenic is a highly toxic chemical element. It can cause cancer if consumed in large doses. Though times have changed, moving soldiers' bodies to their hometowns remains necessary. Most American troops battled abroad and the U.S. military devised a whole system of transporting, identifying, and preparing the corpses. The dead bodies arrive at Dover Port Mortuary, one of the largest morgues in the world. Afterward, the corpses are checked for hidden bombs and undergo DNA and X-ray examinations. Interestingly, the same person cannot prepare the soldier's body and deal with their personal information. There are always two separate groups for these kinds of work. This division exists because some might become attached to the deceased soldier and find the body examination too difficult. Mortuary workers also prepare uniforms and other American flags that the assistants drape over the coffin. Did you know, the corpse law protects dead bodies. Those who dig them up or experiment on them face harsh punishment. Key Point 5 Funeral Procedures Around the World If you are incredibly tall, you might wonder how your body will fit in your casket when you die. No worries, funeral directors will see to it. And no, they won't cut off your legs. That's an abuse of corpse law. In the U.S., funeral homes can provide coffins for people above 6 feet 2. They might even find some variants for 7 feet tall corpses. In other scenarios, there's always an option for custom-made coffins but they can be pricey, which might seem unfair, but that's the truth about the funeral market. If you prefer cremation, there will be no problem fitting into the special chamber. It can accommodate someone 9 feet tall, which is a rare occurrence. Interestingly, no matter how tall or big deceased people are, their ashes will fit in a small urn. The cremation flames destroy all soft parts, including the organs and muscles, leaving only the bones. The skeleton is the same for everybody, thus almost the same amount of ashes. Men's remains tend to be heavier as they are taller and contain more bone. Forget about what you look like on the outside. It's the weight on the inside, your skeleton, that counts. Caitlin Dowdy In most Western countries, funeral directors put the bones in cremation machines, which grinds them to ashes. The family can then take the urn containing the cremated remains home. 
Some people consider making jewelry from their relatives' bones, but this option is not practical. Ashes are better to work with. You can make a diamond or a vinyl record with them or turn them into tattoo ink. Bones after cremation are highly deformed and fragile. They won't last on a bracelet or ring. In Japan, people follow a ritual called koneage. After cremation, funeral directors set the bones in front of the family so they can pass the remains to the urn with special chopsticks. During this custom is the only time people can give something to each other with chopsticks. Passing food like this in a Japanese restaurant means you are bringing funeral traditions to your table, which is a bad omen. Key Point 6 The Grim Fate of Conjoined Twins If death falls upon one conjoined twin, will the other die too? It's a question that bothers many people. The mystery of conjoined twins is still unresolved. No one has ever provided proven evidence on why it happens. Are they identical twins in one egg that couldn't split at the right time? Or are they two separate fetuses that merged at the wrong time? Let's leave this question to future medical geniuses. What is sure for now is that conjoined twins have a minimal chance of surviving once they are out of the womb. 60% die before birth, and around 35% do not survive the first day. The most prominent case of conjoined twins is the story of Eng and Chang. They were born in Siam, now known as Thailand, and that's how the name Siamese twins appeared. Chang suffered from multiple health issues, and he was a heavy drinker. Surprisingly, Eng couldn't feel any effects when his brother was drunk. They managed to live until age 62 and died of a blood clot. Chang died first, and then Eng followed him two hours later. Conjoined twins born in the 21st century are often separated as soon as possible before the babies are a year old. Caitlin Dowdy The organs or body parts that conjoined twins share can also influence their survival prospects. They might remain alive and even have surgery if they have a joined liver or hip. In some cases, one twin's stronger organs do the work for both bodies. If babies are joined at the head, there is no guarantee they will have a good life. Sometimes during surgeries, doctors sacrifice one of the twins for the sake of the other. Often, adult conjoined twins refuse separation surgery. They are comfortable with their coexistence and cannot imagine how to function without each other. That was the case for Margaret and Mary Gibb, who decided to stick together despite their doctor's warnings. However, they both died minutes apart after cancer spread through their bodies. Conjoined twins experience life that is beyond the understanding of most individuals. Conclusion Death scares people because there is no assurance of what will occur on the other side. Various religions and beliefs will always provide different versions of the story. But a corpse has yet to return from the dead to prove any. Even the light at the end of the tunnel that some people see in life-threatening situations has a scientific explanation. It comes down to the supply of oxygen and blood to the brain. Fighter pilots who train at high speed may experience a hypotensive syncope. Their vision starts narrowing and they see a tunnel of light ahead of them caused by the brain not receiving enough oxygen. This marvelous organ can create magical images even in dangerous situations. Death will always be an inevitable part of reality, no matter how hard you may try to escape it. It will haunt you in popular books, magazines, sad movies, and real-life news bulletins and get closer to you at the funerals of your relatives and friends. And then, hopefully later in life, you will finally meet death face to face. You can confront it with panic and despair or greet death as an old friend. Oh, hey, I've read a lot about you. Whatever happens when you die, you will only find out in the end. Stop stressing about it now and relish every moment of your life. Try this. Check out Aquamation, the process of dissolving human bodies using water. Due to its eco-friendliness, it has a chance to become prevalent in the funeral industry.